Welcome to Man360. I'm your host, Brian. Today I sit down with the Director of Global Ministries for Evangelist Marilyn Hickey, Stephen Kaiser. God has used Stephen in some amazing ways, and he shares some great godly insight with us, including balancing personal and professional life while serving in full-time or even volunteer ministry. Then Stephen and I sneak over to Pastor Marilyn's house to cook up a dish I normally do not like, Brussels sprouts. And for the first time ever on Man360, I get to interview one of God's generals, Marilyn Hickey herself, where she gives some great godly advice just for men. We have so much good stuff today that we're going to get right into my interview with Stephen Kaiser. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. So Stephen, thank you for being on Man360. It's great to be here, Brian. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you for being my cousin as well. So, And I'm glad to be your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk to you a little bit today about your role you know, with Maryland Hickey Ministries. I know that you are the Executive Director of Global Ministries. And so I want to talk a little bit about, kind of just share a little bit about your background, You know, where you came from professionally, some mm -hmm. things you did in the business world that really gave you some of the skills and opportunities to be able to serve Maryland now. Well, Brian, thank you. Again, it's a pleasure to be here at Man360. We really appreciate your program. I've gained a lot from it and watching it and also the Christian Television Network. Thank you. Um, working with Maryland now for 23 years has been wow. really a hallmark and a great privilege of my life to be able to serve her the way that, uh, the way that not only myself, but a calling is for not just the one person, but a calling is for the whole family. Mm. So my wife and my daughter have been part of this calling as well. But there's a lot of preparatory steps sometimes before God puts you in a position yeah. uh, that He's ordained you for and given you a vision for. And some of that preparation uh, came to me by way of, of course, education. Um, I had a seminary education at Southwestern in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, also, before coming to work with Marilyn, I had the great privilege. One of the, one of the most fun privileges of my life was working at Walt Disney World. I was one of the uh, directors in Casting Center in uh, Orlando, and it was a great pleasure to be working with them and literally hiring cast members for Walt Disney World from all over the world wow. to work in the Disney theme parks mm -hmm. and in the hotels and resorts uh, there. That had some of the best corporate training hmm. of anywhere in the world. I also was able to uh, be a speaker at Disney University and uh, for corporate Disney and for corporations that come in to learn how Disney makes learning fun mm -hmm. and how to do business in a fun way. That's so awesome. That was a lot of fun. I also spent a short time in human resources with Papa John's International and I was able to help them open up the Western U.S. All this is before I uh, went to work with Marilyn. And I also spent uh, a year working as the executive director of a private foundation uh, that funded the gospel work all around the world. So that's awesome. it, it's, been a, it's been a great ride. Yeah, that's great. I know that with Marilyn, you know, there's this global perspective or aspect of her life. You know, she's, I think she's 90 or 89 now. Yes, and in six months she turns 90. Yeah, it's not going to be 90 years old. And, I, and so there's all of these other responsibilities. So can you share some of the specific responsibilities that you have now with her and with the ministry? Well, the team that I have a great privilege of leading at Maryland Hickey Ministries is the Global Division. And the Global Division covers all domestic as well as all international events. Mm -hmm. So if Dr. Hickey is on a television program in Dallas, uh, it's my department that puts that, that uh, work together. Mm -hmm. If she wants to host a, a big crusade, a large healing meeting in Bangladesh or Sudan or Pakistan, Ethiopia, it's my team that puts that together. And uh, uh, a lot of people will, will say that I'm, if you will, the John the Baptist for, for Marilyn Hickey. I've said that a lot yeah, actually to you've people. You've said it a lot to me yourself. <laughs> And um, I do work as a John the Baptist because when Dr. Hickey wants to go into a particular country, um, then I will go there first and I will start building those relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the key things that we have to remember in ministry, really in the corporate world as well, is that so much of our work is based on relationships. Mm. And we have to have those relationships right. right. And I think that begins with our relationship 
one-on-one -on -one with Christ, and then from us it goes out to others. So I'll go into the Pakistans ahead of time. If Maryland's gonna have a large, like we had about three years ago, we had over a million people in one night in Karachi, Pakistan. Wow. That packed the, that packed the, the field, over a million people. Incredible. We had the Grand Imam of Pakistan sitting on the platform with us while Dr. Hickey ministered. But it took about six trips into Pakistan before that event took place. Right, it wasn't and just you just landed and Maryland hopped out and no, Greece, you hopped no. in the plane and flew back. It, it took a lot of cups of tea, if you will, <laughs> to build relationships with the pastors, with the government leaders, uh, with the Muslim community, as well as the Christian community. Mm -hmm. So it's building those relationships that, that is a real key, a key job that I have. And then that bridges it from that to Dr. Hickey coming in. Yeah, can you share a little bit, and I know we've shared privately as a family some of these things that, yeah. that yeah. I still, I just can't wrap my head around even to this day when we've talked about them in the past. But can you just share, just share a couple of times where there were really close calls for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of interesting because it balances it out. Uh, people sometimes will see somebody like a Marilyn Hickey mm -hmm. or a Billy Graham, you know, these great ministers of the calling, and they have great teams that are, that are a part of them, mm -hmm. and I'm fortunate to be part of a, a great team as well. Um, but uh, it, it, they think it might be just, just wonderful that they're going all over the world and they're flying from this city to that city and they're staying in this hotel and people pick them up and they drive them around. Jet setting, as they jet say. Jet setting all over the world. Right. But really there's, there's another whole book to that th that people don't see. Mm -hmm. For example, we had a big, uh, this is just a few short years ago, we had a big meeting that we were planning in Islamabad, Pakistan. And uh, that's the capital of Pakistan. And we landed several days before the event, Dr. Hickey and myself. We had everything prepared. I'd gone in several days, several times ahead of time. And uh, when we arrived, uh, just the night before the big crusade were to kick off in the stadium, which the government gave us, um, I got uh, called in to the president's uh, palace there in Islamabad. And it was their secret service. I think they're called SSI. And they said, we have to pull the event for tomorrow night because we've just mm -hmm. arrested, it'd be on the news in the morning, we just arrested 16 of a 32 member terrorist cell and we stormed their compound. And when we did, oh we found pictures of Dr. Hickey, this big, Stephen Kaiser, Joe A. Strike, our media tech, as well as our Pakistani national chairman. <laughs> and not only was this on the table with blueprints of the stadium oh that had red X's where we were going to be, but the suicide bombers they had rested had suicide bomb vests that had our pictures on those. Oh and they gosh. had taken these pictures by telephotic lenses after we arrived into Pakistan. Oh, wow. It wasn't lifted I from our website. Know, I didn't even yeah. know that. <laughs> so I thought it was just that from makes the it website. Even scarier, oh. you know? So that kind of puts a whole new perspective on it. Yeah. Now, Dr. Hickey said, let's pray and let's see what God wants us to do. And she said, I want my staff to go home if you need to go home to your wives. Yeah. But we called our wives and Brian, our wives felt what we did. God called us, yeah. he is gonna protect us. Right. We have a vision that we're gonna fulfill. And that's the thing about when you support somebody in vision, when you serve somebody like a Marilyn Hickey, and maybe men are serving their bosses or boss ladies and boss men in the workplace that are yeah. even secular jobs. You've got to share that same vision. If you do, then you're like a hand in a glove. Exactly. So we didn't walk away. And you know what? Uh, Father James of the Catholic compound there in Islamabad gave us his compound the next night. We didn't have time to re-advertise a change of locations, mm -hmm. but he gave us his entire cathedral and Catholic compound. Less than 24 hours, we put up the platform, we built the film set, wow. we built everything, and we had over 40,000 people per night the next few nights. So God did amazing things. A sec another thing that happened yeah. was when we were in Khartoum, Sudan. It was Marilyn Hickey's second time in Khartoum, Sudan, and when we were there, Osama bin Laden was there, and he was watching everything we were doing. But uh, I got roughed up on one of my site visits ahead of time, and they wanted me to leave the country. But uh, we stayed, and we do the work wow. that God calls us to. So how do you balance that with your personal and professional life, and what do you feel like you've done maybe well, and you look back and you're like, I wouldn't do any different, or what are some things that you would say, man, I really wish I wish I would have maybe done it differently? Sure, sure. You don't always ask the easy questions, Of do course you? not, like Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> she sends you to hard places, I ask hard questions. You know, I always try to keep a balance that, um, God first, family second, and ministry and business uh, third. Now, it's easy to get caught up in ministry and think that should go first, but yeah. really keep God first and then keep uh, the ministry second and uh, 
the ministry third, rather, and your family second. Yeah. And that's something that I tried to do. I feel that during my time of working with Marilyn Hickey that I've tried to balance that really well. I wanted to let my wife and my daughter know it doesn't matter what continent I'm on, what time zone that I may be in, that I want to be able to let them make a phone call to me, yeah. my little girl to know if I need to call daddy, he's going to pick up the phone no matter where he is. Mm -hmm. If I text him, he's going to return that text as soon as possible. So I made that accessibility. I've also tried to, um, I've also tried to do my confessions. I have about 30, 30 35 confessions I make every day, uh, speaking the word, yep. you know, and I speak those out every day, and I'm really good on that, I think. Um, but what has been difficult in traveling uh, probably has been keeping up with uh, the Bible reading mm -hmm. and personal devotionals because mm -hmm. you're tired, you have people that are pulling on you, and you've also got to be able to be ready for them. So yeah. I think that's the thing that has been challenging to do, and we all can at times want to put our ministry and our work first, yeah. but we've got to put God first and then our family and then the other and that will fall in line. Yeah, and even before we went on, you know, Dee Dee was talking, your wife was talking about, you know, that there's a, really a prayer bubble that's really provided for you to go in to do yeah. these things. That's right. And, you know, that we can be able to move out and do what God's called us to do and asked us to do in servanthood, but also to realize that we need that prayer and also not to walk in fear, you know, as men that, you know, we can get kind of nervous about those things. Obviously, you do things more on a global scale, but even as you mentioned, you know, for men that are even, you know, serving in their, in their family, in their church, in their business, whatever they do, that they're also operating in that servanthood, right. but also not operating in fear. So can you just pray for our men today that they sure. would operate in sure. servanthood, they would find that heart for that, and also not operate in fear? I will. My pleasure. So we're going to pray right now, and, and uh, God is going to keep you from your fear, and He's mm. going to bless you in all that you do as mm -hmm. you seek Him. So, Father, Brian and I just uh, join our hearts together right now, and we just bless, bless all the men that are watching this program. We ask that you put your anointing upon them, God, and you help them to seek you first, early, and then to yes. put their families, Father, second, and then thirdly, to put uh, their careers, their businesses, even their ministries, to go into third place. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I thank you that these men are not going to operate in fear. Yes. They may have big things ahead of them that the devil wants to come against them and bring destruction, but we speak against that destruction, we speak against that fear, and we pull that down. And we ask that you give them peace and discernment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stephen, thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate so I know it. that you also like to cook, and I know that I you're, uh, you know, uh, connected with Marilyn. So do you think you could maybe get the key to her house and maybe we could sneak over there. I don't. I think she's out of the country right now, so maybe we could sneak over there and maybe cook up some kind of dish or something. You know, Brian, I think there's a scripture that says all things are possible with God. Yes. So I think we'll be able okay. to get our hands on a key to her house. Okay, well, let's do a cooking segment. Let's do it. I let's love it. Let's do it. All right. So, Stephen, I cannot believe we got into Marilyn's house. We did it. This is Mar Okay, if anybody of you ever seen or know about Marilyn Hickey, this is Marilyn Hickey's kitchen in her house in Colorado. So, you have already actually beat me here and started to cook this down. I did. So, what did you put I in did. here? Well, we're making Brussels sprouts today, and I know you're going to talk about that in a moment. Yes. But we want to put a syrup over the Brussels sprouts, okay. a nice glaze. Okay. So, we use a wonderful uh, organic balsamic vinegar. Okay. And we do a half a cup of that with a one full cup of sugar, and then that's going to reduce down on the stove. That's what we're doing now. Okay. And we'll use that as a glaze after the roasted Brussels sprouts come out of the oven. So this is probably why when I come to your house and you have these for any holiday, yeah. I actually eat them yep. because I hate Brussels sprouts. Do you? And I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there as well that may be watching this that are like, you, we said Brussels sprouts and maybe you turn the channel or maybe you turn the volume down or maybe you got on your phone, but you want to watch this because these are the only Brussels sprouts. These, Yolanda makes a version of these as well but don't tell her, like, I really actually like yours. You like mine better? I do really like oh. yours better. So, um, I won't yeah. say a word. I well, say don't a word. say it. And also, this seems like a whole lot of, of cooked down syrup to put on only about 10 or 12 Brussels sprouts. Well, actually, I made this for three pounds. Okay. But for TB, we're not going to do three pounds today. Okay. We're just going to do a small. Because we have our magic stove. We have, the, this yes. Is the magic, this is a stove that cooks <laughs> faster than any cooks stove really in fast. America. That's yes, right. Yes, it's amazing. Okay. Well, Brian, I'm going to put this off on the other okay. burner now and let that just start seeping. Okay. I'll turn off the stove so Marilyn will be proud of us. And then you there want me go. to cut up some yes. of these? Yeah, so if you can start cutting up okay, the Brussels sprouts. Okay, we just throw sprouts. one away. No, you don't throw them okay. away like that. Well, that's what I'd rather do with them. Is just no, throw them no, okay. these are going to be so good, you're going to love right. them. Okay. Cut off the ends. Okay. And then you're going to split them down the middle. Okay. And then always take off the hard part of the shell of the Brussels the little, sprout. 
Yeah, you don't want to have the hard part. Well, they're all ba it's all bad, though, right? No, it's okay. good. It's delicious. And you know what Marilyn Hickey told me? What did she say? She told me that she thinks Brussels sprouts are her favorite vegetable. She did not say that. She said that. No, she didn't say Although that. Although I know she likes fried okra, too. I she, does she that. like fried okra? Yep, Oops. she does. No, they oh, go, that go in here, not down oh. there. Guess we can't eat that one. You're just like pre-programmed to not like Brussels okay, sprouts. Okay, and I already cut some of these, and you can see that we already started doing okay, some of the good. drizzle, so we can practice this again. Now, you so, need to put some olive oil okay, on there. Okay, olive oil on here. We'll get good these organic on. olive oil. Lather it up with that. Okay, we'll get a little more. Brian, you're here. doing really well in the kitchen. Well, well, it's the most anointed kitchen. This I, is Dr. This Hickey's is, kitchen. This is, I, there was like a hum of angel wings in this kitchen. All around the in. kitchen. All around. I feel it too. I feel it. Now, this is kosher salt. Okay. You can also use sea salt if you'd like. Yes. I hope Marilyn doesn't catch us. Oh, I, dear. It, this would really be Hopefully, bad. we can get out of here before she comes I home. Don't, I don't think she's And some in cracked town, black so. pepper. Okay. Cracked black pepper. Cracked black pepper. Say that fast five times. Uh, cracked, black like... cracked black pepper. Cracked black pepper. <laughs> cracked black pepper. Cracked black pepper. Cracked black pepper. Guess I did. Okay. okay. All right. So I think we're good. Now, Brian, okay. let's get this into the oven, all right? Okay. Should we we we're going to cook these. Okay. We got to get these cooked at 400 degrees in an oven, the, the okay. oven below. No, no, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. You're yes. right. You're yes. right. You're right. And then this is a cool oven because you put them in here and then. Ding! Voila! Voila! Oh! They're cooked! You ah. already had you already had some now, cooked. Should I move this Look out of that. the way here? Look at that. You already had some cooked. Okay. Very, very good. Oh, no, these good. are the ones we just did. Those are the Perfect. ones you just oh, yes. made. So we put them in here. Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and add those into this pan okay. here? These cook for about 25, 30 minutes, roasting in the oven at 400 degrees. Okay. I'm gonna put those in. And then let's put some dried cranberries on top. Okay. And some of the pecans. What are you all doing it? Oh, Pastor Marilyn. Oh my goodness. What are you, what are you doing here? How did you get in? Wait a minute, what are you doing here? This is your kitchen. I know. Well, Pastor Marilyn, let me, let me finish up with, well, you wanna stay here for a second. Let's finish this up with Stephen and maybe we can talk a little bit. And I'll, okay. I'll interview you on Man360. Is that okay? We're making Brussels sprouts. Well, do I get to taste them? Well, you can have all of them. Oh. <laughs> They're all yours. I love them. Actually, I made this all for you, just for you. Okay. okay. So let's finish here. Do a here. few more of the okay. dried cranberries. Okay. And then, Pastor Marilyn, we put pecans in there as well. Wow. Isn't that delicious? Yes. And then Brian, Brian made a beautiful syrup of balsamic vinegar yes. and some sugar reduction. So, Brian, if you'll take this and just sprinkle that. Okay. Glaze that over on the Brussels sprouts, and you'll be ready for a wonderful dinner. Wow. And then you're going to just kind of mix that together. That's good. That's, That's good. There, huh? Yeah, that's What's plenty. better than Brussels sprouts? <laughs> Steak. Oh. Uh, well, I'm talking ham. vegetables. Oh, vegetables. No, I'm not talking meat. I, I just... Vegetables. Oh, Brussels sprouts, I tell you. All right. So Steve, I'm a Texan. I like vegetables. You now, are. I, I think you and that. Dr. Hickey should take a taste. Okay, Pastor. Oh, good. Okay, let's take a taste of this. So I get to sample yeah. now? See, you like when we break into your house and use your kitchen. Well, if you're going to give it to me, yeah. <laughs> mm. That is excellent. Oh. Is so that good? good? Oh. Yeah. All right. Stephen, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. I, again, I appreciate always going to your ha coming to your house. We have prime rib. We have all these great food. Anytime, Brian. Anytime. Again, for men that are watching this segment right now, we will provide this uh, recipe on man360.tv. You can go to our additional content page. And I'm going to go slip away here with Pastor Marilyn and interview her and talk a little bit about her life and ministry, Pastor Wally, and some other things. Pastor Marilyn, thank you for being on Man360. Oh, I love being with you. And, you know, thank you actually for letting us use your kitchen. Stephen and I had a great time cooking and teasing like we were coming in and sneaking around. And so we love <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you're like family to me. Why wouldn't I like it? No, Pastor Mel, I appreciate you just on a personal level for Yolanda and I, you know, just some of the medical challenges and things. Um, you know, I think sometimes people see you and they know you as a personality, but we really know you as a person. And we really appreciate just the, the time of praying for us and encouraging us. And, and I remember when you would be overseas and you'd be preaching for Joseph Prince or whatever, and you're like, hey, I'm over here and I just want to let you know I'm praying for you and I love you and I'm praying for your eyes. It was so important to me. And I know those were times like that that really helped me hang on because yeah. we were, you know, we had that relationship. That was a challenging time for you. And I think we as Christians need to stand in the gap, not just find the gaps, stand in the gaps yeah. until we get the miracle. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I, obviously at one point I was on your team with the church, yes, with the were. ministry. And um, you know, I know there's a power of having a team of people around you to be able to accomplish the things that, that God asked, has asked you to do. So can you share a little bit just about what you've seen God do through 
prayer, obedience, some of the things that God took you into and brought you into and brought you out of? Well, I think the processes of God are very important. And so sometimes it looks like we're going to fail. Yeah. You know, because I remember when I tried to get on television here, you know, and the one of the board members said, you know, I think you're really one of the biggest failures I've ever seen. <laughs> so encouraging. My goodness, I'm going to really win here. <laughs> and these are the times you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. What does he say? Right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yep. What does he say? I'm surrounded with favor like a shield. Yeah. So we have to stand in faith mm -hmm. in whatever the circumstance right. and say what God says. You say, well, I don't feel it. I'm not talking about feelings. Right. I'm talking about That's faith. That's a big, big piece. It's a big deal. And especially even, you know, people think as men, obviously this is a men's program, that, you know, men don't really be operate on their emotions, but men operate on their emotions in in of course poor they ways and really letting their heart deceive them, you know, as the word says, yeah. and that we need to not do that. And I know, too, just speaking of men, in your life, Pastor Wally, who was such a huge influence, um, oh you know, and just the pastoring that you guys did, but I really appreciate what, Paul, what Pastor Wally did for you in helping encourage you to be who God called you to be. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, you know, uh, he would always say to me, uh, Marilyn, you can do it, you know, because I'd say, I don't know if I can do this. And, you know, I'd like to be on this television channel. I'd like to do this. And he'd say, you can do it. You can do it. And he's the one who got me to preach in our church. Hmm. And he said to me, shocking, he said, I want you to preach every other Sunday. Wow. And now, this was back in the day, too, oh, when man. that was kind of looked down on. Oh, it was. <laughs> and so every other Sunday I would take the pulpit. And so, wow. you know, uh, I never had anyone who encouraged me more than Wally. Yeah. He thought I could do everything. Yeah. I didn't always think so. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate knowing and knowing Pastor Wally for a time. Just I could just see how he always honored you and honored your gift. Yeah, I think did. sometimes, you know, men honor because they want to be honored back instead of yeah. just honoring because of what God has given them and their gift of their wife. And I really believe, too, as well, and I've talked to Yolanda a lot about this, that wives are a true reflection of their husbands. Yes, they are. In ministry, in love, in how they care, how they do those things. So I know that there was the church here, you know, Happy Church back in the day and all of its right. iterations here in Denver. But also, you know, you have a huge missions aspect to what you do. You know, you take people on missions trips. So why is it important for men to, uh, you know, be a part of a missions trip, to go on a short-term missions trip? Or kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Well, there's something about getting out where the need is. Mm. And, you know, you think, well, I can't do it. But you'll find that what you have is big compared to what they have. Yeah. And so, I, and I think laying hands on the sick and praying for the sick, and sometimes I feel about as spiritual as a mouse. I'm tired. I have jet lag. And I said that to God. Yeah. I've got jet lag. He said, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And really yeah. to line up with what his will is. Right. Um, and I think there's appreci an appreciation that we get, too, when we go overseas, oh. specifically for America. And we have people maybe that are even around the world that are watching, you know, Man360. But it, it's just so good to get out of your element. Oh, it is. And I think that you've really been able to be a catalyst for people and families. I think specifically, you know, we know the adage, when you get the man, you get the family. You do. Um, and, you know, even be able to push and encourage them to be able to lead their family and to go on a missions trip and to do those kind of things too. Right. So I know you have a new book that's out. Actually, I think it just came out recently, um, and it's called Believe Big. We actually have it right here. And um, so talk a little bit about Believe Big. Well, if I hadn't believed big in my life, you know, I would be, what, making pancakes and staying at home. But, you know, I bet... Uh, Frida Lindsay, yep. and she prayed for all the nations in the world. So she wanted to mentor me. Wow. So she had me do it. Well, it took an hour and a half. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I started praying for the nations in the world. Wow. Now, I didn't know that I would be going to them. And you thought I, you would just be praying for them. That's right. <laughs> so think big. I think I would say pray big. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. So I'm thinking big now. 
there are some big things I want to do, and I believe God is going to have me do them. So if there's one thing, I guess it's kind of to wrap this up, you know, what is one thing that you could really speak to men and speak into their lives, you know, from all these 89 years of life, these, all these years of ministry that you've been in ministry, what was one thing that you could really speak to men to encourage them today? Well, I would say this. Now listen to me. Every morning when I get up, I make coffee. I like coffee. It kind of wakes me up. And then, beside my chair, I have 50 commitments that I speak. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens mm -hmm. me. So I say the things I want to be every day. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if you will speak the promises of God, you'll move the mountain. That's right. It says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mm. You tell me that doesn't work, honey. Too late. Been working it a long time. <laughs> You're already convinced at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. Can you pray for our men today? Oh, I'd love and to And just do speak it. something over them? Oh, yes. Yes. So, Father, I just pray for the men watching this. Yes, God. I pray unusual anointing of wisdom and faith. And I thank you that they have a hunger for the Word of God. Mm. They have a hunger to speak the Word. Mm -hmm. They have a hunger to do the Word. And I come against fear and anxiety mm -hmm. and feelings of insecurity yes, and not Jesus. being worthy. I pray for a special anointing yes, God. on every man, that special calling that is just unique for that man, for you. In Jesus' name, expect yes, a fresh anointing every day. Get up in the morning, speak his promises, and go move your mountain. Mm. Awesome. Pastor Marilyn, thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I love you. I just cannot say, there's not words that can express how much I love you and appreciate you. I appreciate your ministry. appreciate you personally and you and Pastor Wally and what you've meant to Yolanda and I through the years. And uh, we just pray that God does even greater things. Like I told you, you know, we honor you. Thank I pray you. for you as well. And just, you know, you'll you. tell me, you'll be like, hey, Brian, I got this big meeting with whoever it is, or yeah. magistrate or king or yeah. president or something. Yeah. And so we're praying for you as well and just believe that thank God's going to finish strong. Thank you. Let's do our 360 review of today's program. Stephen Kaiser and his team are a vital part of what Marilyn Hickey is able to do around the world to reach souls. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with him and that it encouraged you in some way to get involved in ministry, even at a local level. Marilyn Hickey truly is an inspiration. She shared that her effectiveness in ministry was directly linked to her husband, Pastor Wally, who honored the God-given gifts inside of her. And I love that her one piece of advice for men was the power and importance of knowing the Bible and letting it control every aspect of our lives. Marilyn is living proof that the Word of God works for those who don't just read the Bible, but live it. We'll provide the web links on our additional content page for ways to order Marilyn's book, Believe Big, as well as Stephen's recipe for Brussels sprouts. Man360 exists to help you be complete in every way through Christ, mentally, physically, and spiritually. You can always send us a prayer request on our website or connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on Man360. Welcome to Man360, I am host Brian. Today I sit down with Marilyn Hickory and Stephen Kieser of the Director of Global Monasteries. Boy, good thing you hit record on that one, huh, Keisha? <laughs>